Chris Bryant, there's no proof that a two-week lockdown is going to make a blind bit of difference to infection rates. That's your view, is it? Well, it's not view. It's not my view. It's scientific fact. Go on, then prove it. Well, if you look at the analysis from every country that has gone to a full lockdown, there is no link, no link to decreased mortality. All this does is buy whales some time. But for what, Chris? What are you buying time for? I don't understand. Well, you don't seem very bright then. It's fairly simple. Our local hospitals are absolutely rammed full. Um, at this time of year... What are the stats? Have... Give me the stats because the government's putting out false stats on this. My local ICU is 75% full. And how does that compare to last year? It's about double what it was this time last year. So you've still so, got 25% capacity. So, so, so. Yes, so, and, we're, and, it, and, it's, and it's filling very rapidly. And we now have the availability of a field hospital, which we set up as well locally. Um, but, the, but the truth of the matter, the difficulty about the field hospitals is you've got to staff them with exactly the same people who are staffing the, um, the, the normal hospitals. So it doesn't really buy you much additional space. And in, on top of that, We've had a major outbreak in my in my local hospital of people contracting the virus in the hospital. So we've had about 130 cases and 35 deaths um, related to that in the hospital. So the real problem is that if we so let you're the saying the virus... NHS is going to be overwhelmed. That's the argument, is it? Because I'm just trying to work out what the argument is for a total national lockdown. I don't know why you're so angry. Why is I'll tell you why I'm so angry. Lockdown? I'm incredibly angry today, Chris. You're very perceptive to pick up on that. I'm very angry because the death figures have been released by the ONS today, showing that with that there were 26,000 excess deaths of poor souls who died at home between March and the 11th of September because they were either too scared or not allowed to go to hospital. I passionately believe these lockdowns don't work, so I'm genuinely trying to understand why you're doing it. I don't think you are genuinely you're trying. It. You're just shouting. You're just shouting. It's a, it's a really tedious way of doing radio. Well, that's your opinion. But why don't you yeah, answer the question? Opinion. You haven't asked the question. Well, I did ask the question. Where's the proof that this is going to work? Well, it's very difficult to prove into the future. However, if you... As I was trying to explain earlier, the main thing that we're trying to do in my part of the world, in South Wales, is we're trying to make sure that the NHS isn't overwhelmed. As somebody who's had cancer in the last 18 months, I'm painfully aware of the issue you raised about what happens to people who don't go and present to their doctors because they're frightened um, uh, uh, that they might contract COVID. Um, but the, the, the other side of that problem um, and we've done very well, actually, locally in trying to make sure that cancer is dealt with in a, co in a completely COVID-free um, uh, setting using the private sector hospitals in Cardiff. Um, but, but the real danger is, of course, that if the NHS, if my local general hospital or the three hospitals that serve my area locally are overwhelmed and are completely full of COVID, which, is, which we're getting on for now at the moment, um, and then you try to add a little bit of flu, which normally comes at this time of year, there will be no space in the ho in the hospitals to deal with any other medical condition whatsoever. So I actually I think your argument is a false one. Um, it's it's not a choice between these uh, trying to care for people who have other conditions as well and COVID. You have to deal with the COVID situation. Mm. You have to restrict the transmission of the virus if you're going to stand a chance of treating people for well, cancer. Look, we we condition. disagree on this point and on that point, and there are two different schools of scientific thought. So it doesn't mean I'm not bright. There are it really. means there's, there's well, there are actually science. Chris. There's one but... school of scientific thought, and then there's a load of crackpots on the other side. Are you joking me? So you're calling Dr. Sunitra Gupta? from Oxford University, a crackpot. You're calling uh, Professor Jay Batakuria from Stanford, one of the uh, top professors of medicine in all of the world, a crackpot. I mean, this is actually offensive, Chris. You do understand that, that science has forever used uh, herd immunity in order to deal with these uh, to deal so with you, these you coronaviruses. I really, believe, I really believe I really believe you need to read to her herd immunity. Yeah, and protect protecting the vulnerable, and I really think you should read and the how Great do you Barrington. The vulnerable? Just tell, just take me through how you protect the vulnerable. But there's a whole so load of, of ways infected. to do it, Chris. Chris, there's a whole load of ways to do it, and the Great Barrington Declaration spells it all out. But look, we you're a nutcase. You're a complete and utter nutcase, oh, Chris, and you're dangerous as well. Chris, do you know what? You can go off now. Get rid of this man, because actually, we will.